Quran refutes atheism in less than 10 words. This is from a channel called Many Prophets One Message. If you want me to check more of this out, I will, but let's, let's get into it. The argument from dependency can be used to make an irrefutable case for God's existence. It goes like this. Everything we observe in the known universe is dependent. When we say that something is dependent, we mean that its existence and the properties it has requires an explanation outside of itself. To argue otherwise is to imply that these things gave rise to themselves. This is like saying that something both exists and does not exist at the same time, which is obviously an absurd proposition. A good example to help demonstrate this principle is a triangle. The triangle's property of the number of angles cannot vary. It can never be anything other than three, because triangle means having three angles. So by its very definition, a triangle is a thing that has three angles. This property of having three angles is explained by the very existence of there being a triangle. By contrast, the triangle's property of colour can vary. Similarly, the lengths of its sides can also vary as they can be longer or shorter. The size and colour of the triangle are properties that are not explained by the mere existence of the triangle. Hence, triangles in the physical world are dependent things, because we must look to an explanation that is external to the triangle in order to explain its existence. Exactly that. And is also dependent on the fact that it's a triangle, if it makes sense. For it to be a triangle, it needs to be dependent on the fact that it's those three angles. There are three sides in a triangle and they're dependent on that fact. For it to be a triangle, it cannot be a squared circle and there can't be a, a triangle circle either. It, needs to, it has to just be one or the other. And as he also gave another example of the explanation of a triangle, it needs to be dependent uh, on a, an external source to explain it, which is exactly the truth. Because for us to understand stuff, we need an external source. It's like if we're born, if someone's born, like a baby, for example, and you tell them what the clothes are, they're not going to understand it without them having the mental capacity to understand what clothes are, if it makes sense. Because it's very remarkable how we can understand the concept of a t-shirt, right? These are just some, some ways to prove that we need an external dependency in the world. But these are just thoughts, thoughts to think about. If we apply these same principles to the universe, then we come to the conclusion that it is dependent because it too has properties that could be different to how they currently are. For example, the number of stars and planets it contains. This raises the question, how did the universe come to be? What explains it? The explanation for the universe cannot be anything that is dependent. Otherwise, we end up in a situation where the explanation requires an explanation, which does not explain anything. Besides, trying to use something that requires an explanation to explain something that requires an explanation will never give us any answers, as it leads to an infinite regress of explanations, which is absurd. Think of a line of dominoes that goes on forever. You will never arrive at a point where they stop falling. We conclude that whatever explains the universe must itself be independent. Now, not only does it have to be independent, it also has to be eternal. In fact, independent things are by their definition eternal. If they're not eternal, then it means they have a beginning, and things with a beginning need an explanation. That is to say, they are dependent upon something external to explain why they came into being. So how does the Qur'an relate to all of this? The 112th chapter of the Qur'an defines this independent, eternal existence as Allah. <laughs> say, He is Allah, the One. <laughs> Allah is he on whom all depend. He begets not, nor was he begotten. And there is none comparable to him. Allahu Samad, which means that Allah is he on whom all depend, highlights Allah's independence. And Lem Yelid, Walem Yulad, which means he begets not, nor was he begotten, implies eternality. We can see that in less than 10 words, the Qur'an describes our Creator in a way that provides an irrefutable argument for his existence. Allah is the independent, eternal reality that explains the origin of life, the universe and everything. Atheists might respond by claiming that the universe is eternal and therefore it does not require an explanation. 
This does not help them, because an eternal universe still has certain properties that could be different to how they are. Therefore, there must be something external to the universe that explains its physical properties. Hence, even an eternal universe is dependent. To help illustrate this, let's take the example of an eternal red triangle. The fact that the triangle has existed forever does not stop it from requiring an explanation for why it's red and not another colour. It does not matter whether the thing we are discussing is a triangle or universe. Nothing magically becomes independent just because it is eternal. Another response that atheists might put forward is... That's a really good point actually, that just registered now. That the fact that there's something is internal doesn't mean it's independent. It just means that it's eternal, right? That same logic could be played to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, you could say, well, he's eternal then. Then why isn't he dependent, right? Why isn't he dependent? So on that factor, it's a very good point, actually, because if you think about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't re rely on anyone. There has to be a source that cannot rely on anyone. And the factor is, is that we all rely on something. And for us to explain everything, we need something that doesn't live in our in the same principles we live in the time zone we live in for us to explain a universe right because if you think about it the moment that we're born to the moment we grow up we learn stuff right even now we keep on learning we keep on learning there is a vast amount of knowledge in the world and for us to say confidently that the universe came by chance it's undermining the intelligence that the universe portrays to show us the science because if you think about it a young child that goes to school and learns from his teacher, he is not going to school with the intention of mind of proving the teacher wrong because the, the child doesn't know anything. Maybe out of his own ignorance he may think, but the teacher in that point may seem like they know everything compared to the child. The same way if we go higher and higher, the teacher uh, compared to their father and their father's teacher, as we go to the the source and the source of the source, it must come to an end because the first ever person to learn something must have learned from something, right? It isn't just something that just pops in your brain that, oh, that's learning. The way we learn is from something else. So we're dependent on learning, if that makes sense. The whole concept of learning requires dependency. To learn, we have to depend. So as I said, if we go back in time, from that person who learned from that person, that person, that person. We go to the first ever person that learned something, he must have learned it from someone or he is to be the teacher for everyone to understand. You get what I'm saying? So this is, this is a very good point. Is that science will eventually come up with an explanation that does not require God. This is actually not the case as the argument from dependency is a metaphysical argument. Metaphysical arguments are based on first principles which transcends all science. If you deny first principles, then it has logical implications that lead to a worldview based on absurdity. You can bring any scientific theory now or in the future, and this metaphysical argument will still be valid. Science can only refer to things that are dependent, because it relies on observations. If you can observe something, then you are dealing with a dependent thing, because it need not have existed, or could have existed in a different way, i.e. with potentially different properties. One final challenge posed by atheists is to ask why can't the eternal independent cause behind the universe be some blind unconscious process? Why should anyone believe that it has a will at all? In response, simply put, since the universe could have been otherwise, then it stands to reason that a decision maker is required to determine its existence from non-existence and decide which properties it has out of other possible properties. The ability to choose is the characteristic of a being that has a will and is fully conscious. This independent, eternal being that chose to create is whom we Muslims call Allah. To exist. So to end this video, I'd like to say that all praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're a non-Muslim watching this, hopefully this has convinced you to come to Islam, inshallah. But if you're not yet convinced, check out my other videos and... All praise to Allah. Have a nice day.